Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look for ways we can work together to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today we have with us Miss Mary Ann Oglesby Southerly. She's the author of A Proactive Perspective in Dementia Care, a Relationship-Based Approach. She's also the director of Veranda Ministries in Gallatin, Tennessee, and she's a frequent uh, podcasts are frequently <laughs> with us on the Better Together podcast. So, right. Miss Marianne, thank you so much for being with well, us thank today. thank you for asking me again. Thank you, number one, for your ministry, the Veranda Ministries. And so if folks will look especially at your book, Remember For Me, they're going to find endorsements by Governor, Governor mm-hmm. Huckabee. They're going to find all kinds of experts saying, this is the lady. This is the one you need to listen to and pay attention to. But the reason you do this is not to make a lot of money because no. you do not. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> you do not do that. But I'm blessed. But you are blessed I and am. you are happy. Yeah. But you do this as a ministry. Yes. And really, uh, this is in in the book Remember For Me. So I encourage folks to get both of these books if if they could. But in this you you've got a you've got a passage you just quote Matthew 25 I was hungry and you gave me something to eat I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink I was a stranger and you invited me in I needed clothes and you clothed me I was sick and you looked after me I was in prison and you came to visit me Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you did it for me. And that's really what you guys are doing over at Veranda, isn't it? Well, we define the least of these Mm -hmm. differently than some because the least of these, there's two age spectrums here. There's the beginning of life and the end of life. Yes. We're really good at doing that part in the beginning of life. But at the end of life, the church as a whole isn't the best at it. Now, I'm not being mean, but it's hard to deal with something like dementia. And so, yeah, but we try. We try to find value and worth. Yes, in every person. In every person. And and let's be honest, um, there are different publications that talk about church. Right. You'll often see, usually you would see a picture of a young family with exactly. kids. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> you never really see on the marketing stuff People in walkers or no. maybe that don't know where they're at or perhaps even who they are. It just doesn't happen. It just does doesn't it? happen because it's not pretty. Mm-hmm. It's, but Jesus is there. He and, is. And if I've learned one thing in the last 12 years, he abides in their heart. And I don't, you know, a brain can be sick. Yes. But a heart, a heart, that inner soul of a person that loved Jesus his entire life still loves Jesus. Yeah. That disease does not wipe that away. It doesn't. That's still there. It's you, still there. You can see it and you can see it. I see it. it every day. I see it. I see people. You can ask them, what are you thankful for today that Jesus, we have a little man. And I say, well, what's your, what are you thankful for, Brother Joe? And he goes, that Jesus saved my soul. There you go. He don't know what day it is. He doesn't know what week it is. But he knows that there was a sovereign God that loved him. That's great. That is how we as the church need to look at people with dementia. God does love them. Mm-hmm. He does care about them. And it, I, you know, I lost three clients last week mm. at Christmas. Mm-mm. Not pretty deaths. Yeah. And yet I saw such jubilation at their homegoing service, mm-hmm. the one of them. It was all about what a wonderful woman she was and how much she loved the Lord. She had a legacy, and it was at her church, and they were all there, and they were all cheering on. And then I have one that I I actually was asked to speak at, mm. and I speak at a bunch of people's funerals, but this one set me back because it was a church of Christ, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it made me so nervous. <laughs> I thought I was going to have a heart attack in number two, but I did it for Ricky. Yeah, and you know what? I had to sing because he lives, mm. and so and I had to speak. So when I got to the singing part of it, after I spoke, I thought, no, I don't need any music. Mm-hmm. I don't You'll need that piano. Fine. We'll be just fine. And I want you to know, everybody in that building stood up when I said. And then one day. Mm. He crossed the river. Yeah. 
He fought life's final war with pain. Didn't matter what our denomination was right that minute. Mm -hmm. It meant that they knew Ricky had lived the life. He'd fought the fight. He'd kept the faith. Great educator mm -hmm. in Davison County. One of the, He was principal of the year in the country. I mean, he was a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. And his life had meaning even after frontal temporal lobe, which is the worst. True. Which is the worst. And so the church was good that day. Mm -hmm. It was. But then I have others that they don't even know who their pastor is mm -hmm. because they've been gone so long. That's what we need to do better at. That's good. So I'm listening and I, I'm thinking of people all through my life and now they, yeah. they're not who they were. People no. say that sometimes, no. but what they really saying, are. They're just sick. Yes. You know, we look at it kind of, you know, you're in mental health. You've been in mental health. They look at them as a mental health disease. It is not mental health. Mm -hmm. It is a disease of the brain. That brain shrinks. Mm -hmm. Just like if your heart's all clogged. Exactly. Arteries. It's sick. It's a vessel inside of me that is sick. Is my heart. But my brain right now is kind of okay. You know, mm -hmm. I'm getting older. Right, right. But the brain gets sick too. And, and what most people don't realize is that when a person dies with Alzheimer's at the end, their brain's the size of a five-year-old. Mm -hmm. It literally shrinks and gets big holes in it. Mm -hmm. It's not like a mental illness. Nothing wrong with the mental illness part, but we can't give a pill to dementia and it mm -hmm. goes away or makes your behaviors change. It'll help it a little, but... It's going to stay. It's going to stay. So what can I do? What can I do to help? some of these people within my church or even that are that are too sick now that too they sick. can't really be there I know. A, just as an individual you know church years ago everybody went to the old folks home on mm -hmm. a sunday and that's great they mm -hmm. deserve to have that music and a couple of months ago i went i did a conference on this in kentucky owensboro kentucky and one of the ladies said i have a ministry in the nursing home, and would you come by and sing to them before you leave? And I said, of course. So I go by. It wasn't the it wasn't the best one in Owensboro by a long shot. Mm -hmm. And when I walked in there, it was just like culture shock to me, even because the veranda is happy. Right. It's a happy place. That was really not a happy place. They were playing bingo. Mm. So then we started singing, and we didn't have a piano player. I said, that's fine. I don't mm -hmm. care. We're just gonna sing. And so without piano, without all of the other things, we start singing Jingle Bells. Now, mind you, it was November the 1st, so it wasn't like it was Christmas time, but that's a universal song that everybody can yes. sing with, you know. And people came from the outside rooms because they heard this group of people singing so loud that they'd not heard that before. Mm. It was joy. It was peace. It was a good memory. It was something fun to think about. And yet every one of them were in wheelchairs, jerry chairs. It was a sad, sad scene. And I thought, Lord, I was thrilled to get to go speak to all these women and all these people. But this is where I was supposed to This have been. is where it's at. This is where it's at. Yeah. And one woman was sitting in a jerry chair, all propped back. And I walked over to her. She said, I can't sing no more. Mm. She said, all those tubes. Mm -hmm. I said, well, that she goes, but I can, I can, I can say the words. And I'm telling you, Dr. Moody, she said every word. She had no vocal cords to sing, but she said the words. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's how much God's word meant to, the, to yeah. her. That's how much those hymns meant to her. And I see that thing, I see it all the time, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, church, where are we mm -hmm. here? So you're saying, you you write a lot about that a lot. A lot. Humor and joy. Joy. And all of those fruits of the Spirit, yes, they still have. They still got it. And if so, we don't believe that, we, we are messed up if we, we believe are. that God takes away the fruits of the Spirit mm -hmm. from us because we're sick. That doesn't even make rational sense mm -mm. to me mm -mm. you have to work harder to find it mm -hmm. you have to have a relationship with that person to find it you can't you can't be mean to them and find it you can't do all these things and we have to include them you know i um perspective is my favorite word which yep. is one of the reasons why it's in the title of the book i have to see things from the other person's point of view mm -hmm. 
I have to see dementia from the person living with its point of view. That's good. And so that's what this book is about. And be proactive in it. Don't wait until it's at the end right. and try to do it. Because then you're not going to have a relationship because they don't know you and you don't know them. So if you take this book and if someone were to read it, which we really encourage them to do that, you talk to them about how to get down on their eye level. Yep. You talk to them about how to approach a person. Approach a person. Approaches everything. To let them tell their story, what it is that they remember. Right. But the main thing I kind of take away, they've got to be there. They've They've got got to be be with them. They have to be with them. And it's okay to have a buddy. If if you and you're, you're both professionals, you both work, find someone. Don't take it personally that this care partner that comes in to help you with your loved one is really good friends with your mama, Mm -hmm. or they trust her more than they do you. It isn't to be mean. It's the fact that they're with them more. It's who they're used to. It is that personal relationship that we talk about having with the Lord. You've got to have a personal relationship with people living with dementia. And that's why when they leave the church, they're taken from that relationship that they've had their entire life. Mm -hmm. And that's to serve. Mm-hmm. to serve the Lord. And so you take that away from them, what do they have? Yeah. it's What do they have? They have, in my opinion, not much, because then nobody wants to be around them because they act weird. Mm-hmm. They act like not the mama I used to know. That drives me crazy, kind of. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. not the mama I used to know. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. It's just that your mama's sick. Yes. So we have to revamp how we look at it as a church, as mm-hmm. Christians, as how can we make it better for families? Mm-hmm. So really, we think like 1 Corinthians 9, which we think of a lot with counseling. We put ourselves in their shoes. Yep. What if this, you know, yeah. if I'm seeing the world this way, I don't sometimes know where I'm at. I don't know what's happening or recognize right. people. Right. And I hear you saying, go to the people. Right. So whether... You know, whatever they used to be part of our Sunday school class, right. they used to be, you know, and involve them. Um, also, since you're thinking, keep them part of the church as long as, as you, you can. can, and and make a way for them to be a part. Even if, for instance, we have people come to our little church, you know, that have dementia. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I've had them holler out at the preacher and go, "You said you was finished." <laughs> <laughs> So here's Sometimes what I say. Sometimes we all celebrate that. Yeah, you know, but I thought, well, he did say he was going to finish, and he did tell her that he was quitting, and so she'd sat there long enough, and yes. she said, brother, I thought you was going to finish. The well, filter then I is start gone. laughing. The filter's gone, but I started laughing. I thought, well, now, if we were all right. sitting here and answer the truth, we'd wonder why he didn't finish up as well. Right. Because he did say he was going to. So it's those funny things like that. It's not because... They don't love the Lord. Or are mean or anything mean, else. Mean, no. It's just what thought said, and yes. they don't filter. And so, you know, but we don't do that to I, – I, I heard Joseph Habedank say something the other day of the, his song called The Basement. Uh-huh. Holy mackerel. I'm just mm. telling you, that song tears me mm. up because it's, it's about drugs and about how he, who had everything going for him, got all tangled up. And now he's repented, and now he's back in the fold, and everybody loves him. And I'm thinking, that is wonderful for him. But he goes, you want to know where you find grace the most? It's in the basement. Mm, That's good. Yeah. That's where you find grace. And I think for people living with dementia and for families, we've lost that ability to show grace and mercy to them. I love the word mercy. Mm -hmm. Um, There's another song. You remember... um, Oh gosh, Dan! Um, he sang "Mercy Came Running." Uh-huh. That old, that contemporary song, "Mercy uh-huh. Came Running." Well, I know Dave Clark, the uh-huh. one that wrote it, and I told him when I he was on my podcast. I said, "I always tell my clients if I'm at deathbed, mercy's gonna come running mm-hmm. for you." Yes, I told Miss Yvonne that. Yeah, the day before Christmas Eve, mercy's gonna come. He's gonna come running because mm-hmm. mercy is he. Yeah. Jesus is mercy. He is going to come running for you. And so I told Dave Clark that, and he goes, oh, my gosh, I never thought about it at death. Uh Uh-huh. But it's true. At end of life. He is running. He's coming after us one day. And so I think that the church needs 
to get those families together. Yeah. Have a have a care care partner group. Bring people in to help those families. We have a a great support group at the veranda, but it's all of the families because and every one of them's in church. Mm-hmm. But there's none at their churches. Yeah. We have to be careful as yeah. a pastor. You'll get you can't have just anybody come in your church and take over. I get that. But as a group of Christians, we need to figure out how to do this and to do it well. We do everything with excellence except take care of the seniors. Oh, that's good. So we don't do so hot at that. We we need to do better. So some of the things you've mentioned is just training where people understand Change, extend the disease. Yes, Alzheimer's and Lewy the difference. Bodies. Yeah, what's what's happening there? Support groups is an, another right. opportunity. Um, I S- think conferences have yes. a conference where you deal not totally with aging, but mm-hmm. have you know. Uh, Free will has a big conference, so you have a conference where you talk about all these entities, but do you talk about aging? Yeah. What does it look like? What's it going to happen? What's going to happen? I mean, if you put the numbers to it, I would say a lot of financial things come from that aging population. I know it does at our church. Yes, absolutely. It does. And so... We have to include them. You know, we that big word that goes around about being inclusive these days. But we have to include the aging population, mm-hmm. and, and we're not doing such a good job mm-hmm. of that. Now, one of the things you do at the veranda is really it offers caregivers a bit of a break. It does. It? it does. There's ways churches could do that as well, though, aren't right. there? There are. And you can have, you know, we went and got legislation passed in Tennessee so we could do it. Now, Georgia has some. Alabama doesn't. There's churches that have what they call respite programs, which Mm -hmm. is what ours is. But we had to go get legislation passed. That's Tennessee for you. You know, (laughs) but we did it. And it allows churches to have respite programs. And we there's guidelines. They leave us alone because of Mother's Day out, Mm -hmm. because that's what I ask them. You can have Mother's Day out and have 500 children. I can have respite and I can only have 15. Mm. And so there is that unbalance there of what the world looks at it as care but it's also as how the church but if you did once a week for caregivers and you can get training to do it heck i do it for people all the time Mm -hmm. but not so much the church and that's what has broken my heart is that i i feel like the world accepts what we do better than the church does so i'm listening i'm a church leader i could say you know i could get up with mary ann do a do some training, work with our people. Exactly. And we could provide a weekly, you know, nine. Nine, to, four hours yeah. is huge. That's all we do is four hours. And that caregiver's got a break. Get yeah. her hair done. The mm-hmm. husband can go play a round of golf, 18 holes maybe. Yep. I don't know how long it takes <laughs> to pay golf. I'm not a golfer. It's too hot. But, but, but yeah, there has to be something. Just bring the families together mm-hmm. and say, we're here for you. I, I we have a lady now that's a counselor that we've asked to help um, the veranda because so many of the families are hurting. Mm-hmm. And then when they lose their loved ones, like the three this week, yes. I said last week, I said, "Oh gosh, Lord, I can't just throw them to the wolves. Yeah. We've had them like five years. Yeah, they've come to the veranda for five years. They're family." And I said, will you help counsel? She has a master's in counseling. Will you help counsel these wives? Mm-hmm. These daughters help them through this. Help them through this. Yes, and it has just blown up. And and the counselor Tony was well, Tony Clay that sang "Sweet oh, Little yeah, Jesus yeah. Boy." Her husband died three months ago. So here is someone that's mm-hmm. been a caregiver five times, who said, "Yes, mm-hmm. I'll help these. I know what it's like." That's what we need is a group of people to band together in the church world, mm-hmm. in the, you know, and I love, you know, I love Todd Parrish. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, he is always so good mm-hmm. on Facebook to say, I'm praying for you. God mm-hmm. told me to pray for you. It is those things because you're in a battle. Yeah. It's, uh, it's overwhelming. It's almost. overwhelming sometimes for me. It's yeah. overwhelming for families mm-hmm. much more than I. So you're listening in and you're thinking, wow, uh, your people are coming to your mind, perhaps even in your community. Yes. Here's some ways to help. And you're thinking, well, where do I start? So I'm going to encourage you to get 
Miss Marianne's book, A Proactive Perspective in Dementia Care. Uh, learn about how you can have a relationship with people right. that are struggling. Struggling, whoever it is. Whoever If it it's the be. family or the person with the dementia. And you know it's got big print. Yes. Did you notice that? <laughs> I did. I cannot tell you how many people <laughs> Thank have you for that. thanked me for big print. I said, well, at least I know the people are reading it that I, you know. So, but yeah, there's so many things in here that are common sense but I tried to put it in a way that a church member, a family member mm-hmm. could read it. And it was, a, why is it so clinical? And and it's not, but it's also a way that you could understand if you're reading it, you can understand the different types, types of dementia. Types of dementia, where People, it is in the brain, yes. how come it is that way. It's helpful. It's helpful. And that's what I wanted. You'll find how to help someone that might be an extrovert versus an introvert. And it's funny you say that because the lady that I was talking to in the parking lot just now, she goes, now my mother's an introvert. I said, well, that's okay. She goes, and I'm an introvert. And you could tell by talking yes, to her yes. that the apple didn't fall far yeah. from the tree, you know. And she's going, but, 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 but noise and, and all these things. And so it does make a huge difference. I'm People think I'm an extrovert, but I'm really not. Yeah. In a crowd, right? I back away. Right. In a right. crowd, I back away. But at my job, I don't because that's my passion. Right. And I will tell you this. I heard a man, uh, Dr. Potts. Uh-huh. Yeah. The, he's the neuro that did in uh, over the VA in Alabama. When I was sick, he asked, could he call me? Well, mm. I was honored. And right. I said, sure. He talked to me a little bit. And I said, what do I do, Dr. Potts? His dad had Alzheimer's. And and he said, I said, I don't want bypass. Mm. I don't want it. Mm. I was just a crying. And he said, I said, and then people say, well, you've, you've got to slow down. You've got to. And I said, but I can't. He goes, I want to tell you some advice. God gives you a passion to do something. Passion. When you're doing what God's called you to do and it's your passion, he will protect you. Mm, Now things we do on our own. Yeah. That cause us. Now, that'll yeah. cause you, you Some know, ulterior eating motive. steak and eating yeah. <laughs> Mexican food. Yeah. That'll cause you to have a heart attack. But the passion of Christ to do what he called you to do, called me to do, he goes, no. Yeah. He'll that's, protect you. That's great. He'll that's protect great you. Great advice. And I think he will our churches yeah. if we if we do those things he's called us to do, and that's to love all the people under the steeple. Mm-hmm. I recorded that old song, then Shadow of the Steeple. Yes, and I will tell you, I never recorded it until we had that comp- we had that yeah. mutual friend. Yeah. And when that happened, there was the lyric. Yeah, the cold blue steel he clutches fats and points it to the place where the shadow of the steeple is resting on his mm-hmm. face. It's happening every day. Every people day. with dementia are committing suicide. Mm. Because their hope, they have no hope. That's our responsibility. It is, and so the focus of the church is in often on young people, and it we want to see young people come to the sure, Lord. Sure, we have to have them. They have but the energy to help take care do, of us. They do, <laughs> and and actually, that's a good thing for them. It that's is a good thing for them to do. But let's not forget folks struggling with memory issues. Let's do what we can to help them. Yes. And that really is Matthew 25. It is. As you put in your book, the least the of least these. of these. And we want to minister to them. So, Miss Marianne, thank you so much for oh, thank being you with for us today. Listening and doing this, it means more than you know. Well, you are doing a great work. And thank you. I want to encourage all our listeners to go to Miss Marianne's website, it's verandaministries.org. And I want to encourage you to get both her books, A Proactive Approach to Dementia Care. And also, this one is really great. Rem- they're both great. Remember for me, which uh, was her, it was a it was little my bit first. of an older book. True stories about true people with dementia and the life lessons that I learned from them that I still hold on to. It's teaching us that we can learn even when people are in this situation. And if you're ever in the Nashville area, the last Monday in November, uh, check out A Christmas to Remember. Just You can go to Veranda Ministries. Ministries. You can go to their Facebook site, and you'll see information about that. Great singing, great um, music by people that love the Lord and also love this important They do. They've been wonderful. 
They really have. They have. So thank you for joining us today, Miss Mary thank Ann. You. And I appreciate it. We thank you, our listeners. We encourage you take this podcast, share it with someone that you think could benefit. Remember, every little thing we do for the Lord really does matter. We truly yes. are better together.